Hi, now we are going to talk about how to write a net ionic equation. Okay, you always have to begin with a complete balanced chemical equation. So let's make this note. You have to have a balanced chemical equation. So here we have it. I have my two moles of potassium iodide plus one mole of lead to nitrate yields two moles of potassium nitrate plus uh, one mole of lead to iodide. Now what we're going to do is what's called the complete ionic equation. So complete ionic equation. In essence, we're going to show everything as it exists inside of an aqueous solution. Um, for example, potassium iodide, when it's put in water, it dissolves, it dissociates is the word that we use. Um, and the water surrounds each of those ions. Well, we're going to write them as ions. The key is seeing that phase aqueous. So whenever you see aqueous, you're going to dissociate it. Okay, let me write down a couple of notes on this for you. Um, so aqueous, you're going to dissociate. There is an exception to this. The only time that you do not dissociate aqueous solutions is if, so here's what I'm going to put exception, they are a weak acid or a weak base a weak acid or a weak base, and really for what you're doing at this level of chemistry, you'll only have the weak acids. Um, a weak acid, for example, would be um, acetic acid, something like this, HC2H3O2 aqueous. I look at that, oh, aqueous, I dissociate, but then I go, mm, that's a weak acid. So that's the only one with aqueous that I won't dissociate. Otherwise, if you see aqueous, you're going to break it into its ions, write it as ions. Now, another reminder along this is looking from the other perspective. You do not dissociate liquid, solid, or gas. Do not break apart liquid, solid, or gas. Um, so here, dissociate anything that's aqueous except weak acids and weak bases. And then let's put number two, do not dissociate anything that's solid, liquid, or gas those are going to stay as one compound, okay, as one compound. All right, so let's dissociate this into its ions. I look at the potassium iodide, it's aqueous, it's not a weak acid, this is just an ionic compound, it's a salt, it's our nickname for it in chemistry, and we're going to break it into the cation and the anion. So the potassium is going to be K plus plus I minus. Now at this point, I wouldn't take the time to write the phase every single time. You might want to ask your, your teacher, do they want you to write the phases for the complete ionic? This gets so big, I don't have my students write the phase at this step. Um, now, little reminder, if you need to look at the periodic table, look at the periodic table. The cation is always going to be the metal. The anion, the negative, is always going to be the non-metal. Um, if you're not sure about charges, look at the periodic table. You can figure out the valence electrons and if it gains or loses electrons and how many for the charge. Also, here's a little trick. You can look at the subscripts and you can cross those charges back up. For example, Ki is understood to have a subscript of one. So you pull up the one for the potassium and the one crisscross that up for the iodide and then you just add the charges plus one for potassium, minus one for the iodine. Uh, now I have to look and say, well, how many do I have? There's a two in front of that. I'm going to have two potassium ions and two, when iodine is an ion, is iodide, two iodide ions. Okay, so we dissociated potassium iodide. Now our lead to nitrate is aqueous. Great, and this is just an ionic compound, a metal with our polyatomic. This is going to be our group of nonmetals, cation, anion. I'm not sure where the charge is because lead can have different oxidation numbers. I'm going to cross that two back up here. That means I have a lead two ion. That two plus um, was the original charge on that ion that when we brought this together as a compound, that's where the subscript two came from. 
um, is to balance the charges of that ionic compound. Plus, now notice the um, understood subscript on lead is a one, so you cross that up, and you get NO3, there's your minus one. The anion gets a negative charge, and it was a one. Now you might have nitrate memorized, you know it's a minus one, or you could look up on a polyatomic table that nitrate is a minus one. Now let's see how many we have. I have one lead, and I have two of the nitrates. So I'm gonna put a two, right like that. Okay, let's continue. So I have potassium nitrate. Dissociate this, we're going to have two of the potassium ions. Remember that's a plus one. And check this out, that two distributes. I also have two of the nitrate ions. Two of the nitrate ions. Now the last thing, lead to iodide. Look at the face, it's a solid. We don't dissociate solids. So I leave that as a compound, potassium iodide solid. There we have it, complete ionic. Now, what we want to get to is the net ionic. So here's our net ionic equation, net ionic. I'll change markers for this next, this next one. Um, so here's the deal. Anything that is the same on both reactant and product sides, it means when this reaction happens, it doesn't change. So look at this. I have uh, two potassium ions, oh, two potassium ions. They're the same. I have two nitrate ions and two nitrate ions. They're the same from reactant to products. Those have a special name. They're called spectator ions. Um, think about you and I going to a football game. I'm definitely not playing in the football game. I sit and watch. I spectate. That's what these do. There, you're going to have two solutions, a solution of potassium iodide, a solution of lead nitrate, mix them together. Well, the potassium ion and the nitrate ion, they just watch. They're not actually involved in the chemical reaction. So those are called spectator ions. And you want to cancel those out. When we write the net ionic equation, we don't include them because they're not actually doing chemistry in that chemical reaction. Then, super easy for the net ionic, after you cancel spectator ions, you just write down what's left over. Here's what we have. And at this point, I have my students go back and add their phases. I have two iodide, and remember that came from potassium iodide, it's aqueous, it's floating in the water, plus a lead two, also aqueous, came from this right here, yields my lead to iodide solid. And this shows which species are actually doing chemistry that are involved in the chemical reaction. Um, let's see, I had another thought of what I want to tell you. I want to write down the steps as a reminder how to go from the complete ionic to the net ionic. So number one, you're going to cancel spectator ions. And then number two, you just write what's remaining. Write the remaining species. Be careful, add those phases back in. Add those phases back in. Okay, net ionic equations, good job.